Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. That's what we come here to do this evening. We come here to lift up the name of Jesus. Can we just open up our mouths and give him the fruit of our lips with our hearts attached this evening? He's a mighty good God. Ain't I right about it? He's a mighty good God. Am I right about it? He's a mighty good God. Am I right about it? Can you let your heart show forth? Hallelujah. How you feel towards our God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's go. I'm ready to give him the best praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. How many of y'all satisfied with the Lord this evening? How many of y'all are satisfied with the Lord this evening? Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your name. I will trust in the Lord all my days. All my days, I will trust in the Lord. All my days, all my days, I will be satisfied with you. I will be satisfied with you. Hey, I will be satisfied with you. I will be satisfied with you. Help me sing. I will trust, I will trust in, the Lord. in the Lord all my days, all my days. I will trust in the Lord, in the Lord <laughs> all my days, all my days. Say, I will be satisfied with you. Yes, I will. I will be satisfied with you. Oh, oh, Lord, I will be satisfied with you. Is that your testimony? I will be satisfied with you. Do it again, do it again. I will be satisfied with you. Oh, yes, I will, I will be satisfied with you. Oh, my Lord, I'll be satisfied with you. Oh, Lord, I'll be satisfied. satisfied with you. Come on, do it again. I will trust. your word you have complete control I will be satisfied with you help me Zion where he lead yes sir say it now I will trust your word <laughs> you have complete you have complete control I will be satisfied I will be satisfied with you yes sir say 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 say
Churches worldwide receive ye them. We thank and praise God for our chief apostle for life, chief apostle Huey L. Rogers, and our presidium and the joint board of bishops. Let's give God praise for the leadership of our church, by the way. God has been faithful to us. God has favored us. Thank you, Jesus. And would you give God a ferocious praise? For our presiding prelate, Apostle Michael Joseph Rogers Sr. Let's give God praise. Oh, what a leader. Oh, what a leader God has given to us. Ah. clap your hands while you're standing as we receive Apostle T. Allen String at this time. Praise the Lord, by the way. We stand in this evening hour to make history once again. This is the first time we've had the keynote address during this time of the day. This is the first time that we had a keynote address prior to the installation of a presiding bishop and an inaugural keynote address. And so we're excited to make history once again. Would you receive the presiding bishop, the most honorable Michael Joseph Rogers Sr. Give God a hand praise as he comes.
Let's give God praise again, everybody. Praise is comely to the upright. There's no such thing as too much praise. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of our God is to be hallowed, clamorously praised. Look at somebody and tell them, when I think, it makes me thank. Give God praise one more time as you descend to your seats. It's of the Lord's mercy that we're not consumed because his compassions fail not. They're new every morning. Great is the Lord's faithfulness. I want you to understand as I was just a few moments ago sharing with the Joint Board of Bishops and it was not my desire to come up with some catchy phrase, some 10 gallon sentence or some jaw breaking phrasing. I wanted to hear God's mind. And these are the words that came to me at the year's beginning this fall. Tell somebody, if you've come from anywhere, faith brought you this far. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that cometh unto God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. It's by faith the elders receive good report. Thank you, Jesus. And so I thank God as I look across this beautiful audience of worshipers, I see a myriad of experiences, some things you never told anybody, but thank God. Hitherto has the Lord brought us. Come on, let's testify. Tell somebody the truth. Tell them if it had not been. Lord who was don't you tell me God doesn't take sides tell somebody oh yes he does tell him he's on my <laughs> and if God be for you but matter who's against you your arms I, I hear small Williams talk, your arms are too short to box with God and so we thank God for all things let me if not uh, already set, set, amen, the house in order as it pertains to protocol. We indeed have been privileged by the way. It's amazing and perhaps have set precedent among other Pentecostal apostolic reformations. Our Father is still with us. Can you say amen? Let's bless God for our apostolic Father. You might as well praise God because the Lord used him to get you in the kingdom. Don't act all haughty now. You know, if God didn't use him, you wouldn't have been saved. So you might as well give God, not praise him, give God praise. The Bible says, and they thank God because of Paul. He's a great man of God. I want to honor God for my team, these men, and God is doing something as... Uh, the time approaches to his coming. I have discovered a special knitting with these men and God has helped us and blessed us, amen, to have that synergy that we need, amen, to get the job done. And what I love is the fact that all of our gifts seem to complement one another. Where one, amen, starts off, the other picks up and so on and so forth. Help me honor God for our first assistant presiding bishop, the Honorable Apostle T. Allen Stringer. Give God praise for Lady Renee Stringer, his wife. Help me praise God for the Honorable second assistant presiding bishop, Apostle B. F. Peterson and his wife, Lady Janet Peterson. By all means, let's praise God for the Honorable Apostle A. Philip Parrott, Lady Diane Parrott. God bless you. I want all the members of the Executive Board of Bishops to please stand in your places. God bless these men. 
apostles and bishops, members of the general board of bishops, stand where you are so that the church can appreciate your leadership, your value in this church. God bless you all. I thank God for our district elders, all district elders and overseers. Will you stand right where you are? The Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. And praise God for all things, for certainly all of our, thank you for all of our, amen, our international officers, our international missionary president, who in the words of both Apostle Lally and Apostle Brown, are doing as doing a Herculean job and we appreciate the women of our church amen you touch my heart mother Rogers calls me sentimental because I save pictures and I read cards and I looked at every signature that was on my birthday card today and I said Lord Jesus amen I'm gonna be in trouble because all these women <laughs> done wrote me a birthday card But I know it's the love of God. Can you say amen? They bypassed Eris and went straight to Agape. For the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. How? By the Holy Spirit. And so we thank God for a wonderful sharing we had on this afternoon. Didn't we hear a word today? Ask your neighbor one more time. Neighbor, can you dig it? My God, Bishop. George Awesome Dawson, true to form, true to his name, God used him mightily on this afternoon. We rejoice in the God of our salvation. Saints, I might as well give you, it's not our custom to divulge anything spoken in the bishop's chambers, but uh, I'm just going to give you a little bit and let you know, amen, we were in chambers just a moment ago and I shared with them it is my desire to conclude these services at 9.30 somebody lift your hands and say Lord help him to keep his promise Lord help him to keep his promise I think I can do it I'm serious I think amen around by 9.30 you'll be heading to those elevators Amen. Praise God. We've had long services, but mighty services all the week long. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise unto the rock of our salvation. I have been honored, I'm sure, for 20 years or more. I served this church as its national minister of music. And as a result, this church has produced, oh, Lord, I'm dating myself now. This church... <laughs> This church has produced three long playing albums. My young people are saying, huh? What's an album? Well, it's not something that you scratch. I can tell you that. Amen. Acetate, as it were, vinyl. And you actually recorded. And I praise God for them. And the legacy continues. I want to appreciate, amen, this young woman, this prophetess, of the latter day, this daughter to whom God spoke of that would prophesy. And she prophesies both in word and in song. Receive now our international minister of music and the Judah Mass Choir. God bless prophetess Makisha Richardson. Give God praise for the choir as they come. And I'll come back to you with a word from the Lord.
So we're going to ask Brandon Webb and Assembly of Praise if you would come quickly with an A selection. Judah, as you exit, we're going to see our guests at this time. We should give God praise for Brandon Webb and Assembly of Praise. Let's give God praise for our own Judah Mass Choir. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. They're coming with the A selection and then we'll have the word of God. God bless you. Will you put your hands together and give the Lord praise? How many glad to be in God's service once again? You ought to wave your hand. Look at your neighbor and say, he allowed us to come together one more time. Come on, is there anybody glad about it? Clap your hands and give him glory. We are excited to be here tonight and we give honor to Apostle Rogers, come on, celebrate the man of God. We consider it an honor. We won't be before you long. And uh, we're going to tell you we're glad to be in the service. Y'all ready over there? We used to sing this song back in the day. And uh, we used to sing it every Sunday in my church. We was glad to be in the service. One more time. Didn't have to let me be here. And it didn't have to let me live. But I'm glad to be in God's service one more time. Come on, let's hit it. Put your hand together. Let me live. Let me live. 
give God praise like you're glad to be in the service one more time let's bless God for our special guest choir thank God for them and their willingness to share with us in song it's good to have folks that will share with you some of you walking around here with no friends feel sorry for you, but I can help you tonight to get some. The scripture says, he that would have friends must show yourself friendly. Some folks are too mean and surly, but I thank God for friendship. Father, I thank you tonight because you've never left yourself without a witness and for the moments that remain, speak to our hearts. Words on the wings of the morning so the dark cloud will pass away. Speak to us so we'll be charged, challenged, and changed. In the name of the Lord, we pray, and those who love him said amen. amen. Look at your neighbor on both sides and tell him, neighbor, neighbor. has gone. Amen. Got a word for you. I ask that you would examine the kingdom's constitution, your holy Bibles, and uh, would you take note of the Holy Writ, the word of our God uh, that is found in the book of First Kings. First Kings chapter number 17, I know you're dressed all the way up and you're looking beautiful tonight. But in honor and in deference of God's word, would you rest upon your feet for the reading of the same? If you'll indulge me tonight, I want to read a few verses and give you context to the text. Beginning at verse 1, and if you have it in your Bibles, indicate the same by saying, Amen. Amen. And Elijah, Elijah rather, the Tishbite who was... Uh, let me just let you know as well, I'm reading from a different version. Right. I think I want to go ahead on and read how God gave it to me because there's some versions that give more insight. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. So I'd like to read from the Christian Standard Bible. Right. It's not going to be different in your regular King James that much. 
but just gives Burbridge to give us a particular contemporary vernacular. Now Elisha, the Tishbite from Gilead settlers, from the Gilead settlers, said to Abraham, as the Lord God of Israel lives, in whose presence I stand, there will be no dew or rain during these years except by my command. And the word of the Lord came to him, leave here, turn eastward and hide at the Wadi Cherith, where it enters the Jordan. You are to drink from the Wadi. I've commanded ravens to provide for you there. So he proceeded to do what the Lord commanded. Elijah left and lived at the Wadi Cherith where it enters the Jordan. The ravens kept bringing him bread and meat in the morning and in the evening. And he would drink from the Wadi. After a while, the Wadi dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, get up and go to Zarephath that belongeth to Sidon and stay there. Look, I have commanded a woman who is a widow to provide for you there. So Elijah got up and went to Zarephath when he arrived at the city gate. There was a widow gathering wood. Elijah called unto her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup and let me drink. As she went to get it, he called unto her and said, Please bring me a piece of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I don't have anything baked. I only have a handful of flour and uh, in a jar and a bit of oil in a jug. And just now I am gathering a couple of sticks in order to go prepare it for me, myself and my son so we can eat uh, it and die. Then Elijah said unto her, do not, uh, don't be afraid. Go do as you have said. But first make me a little or small loaf from it and bring it out to me. Afterwards, you may make some for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord God of Israel says. The flour jar will not become empty and the oil jug will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the surface of the land. So so she proceeded to do according to the word of Elijah. Then the woman, uh, Elijah and her household ate for many days. The flour jar did not become empty. The oil jug did not run dry according to the word of the Lord. He had spoken through Elijah. Thank you. You may be seated. The grass withereth and the flower thereof fadeth away, but the word of our God will stand forever. Beloved, uh, the word of the Lord tonight and its thematic thrust might sound a bit trite and simple to you, but don't ignore the power of revelation. For just a few moments, I'd like to reason with you from this thought, God will make a way. Need somebody to release your faith and tell your neighbor, God will make a way. John Wooten, known as the Wizard of Westwood, he won 10 NCAA championship games of men's basketball in 12 years as head coach of the UCLA Bruins. He's famed for having star players like the former Lou Alcindor, who became Kareem Abdul-Jabbar as well as that seven-foot hippie known as Bill Walton. 
But then he had other members of his team that uh, not filled with the stars and standouts, just regular, mundane, averaged individuals. But somehow or the other, he was able to wring the rag dry on their talent and allowed them to exceed to high levels and significant levels of excellence and execution. And as a result, they were indeed perennial favorites in the NCAA. It's amazing to me that when I consider Wooden's uh, approach and philosophy to basketball, um, he stands out resplendently. The most significant thing about Wooden's coaching was how he began the first practice of every season and their training. He sat each player down both the superstars and the average players. And he instructed them to do something amazing. It had nothing to do with X's and O's, training or conditioning, but he taught them how to put on their socks. Because in his own words, knowing how to put on your socks is fundamental to the functioning on the court. He understood that putting on socks the wrong way would eventually lead to blisters and boils that would impact the game in the later season. And so he sat them down and worked with them and told them that basketball begins with sock attentiveness. These grown men are sitting down learning how to put on their socks. I need to share in the Holy Ghost tonight that some of us want to leave high in God. We want to above the rim anointing. But I come here to tell you, you're going to have to focus on spirituality, sock putting on. Uh, 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 friends, you can never advance from the fundamentals. You can never get away from the basic concepts of holiness. I thought that I'd have somebody say amen. Uh, that, that, that no matter how much we progress in God and no matter how much he done for you, no matter how much he's blessed you and you look highly favored that there are some things that you're going to have to make sure remain in the foundation of your spirituality for if the foundations be destroyed what shall the righteous do and I can hear Paul saying when you should have been teachers you have need to be taught the first principles of the doctrine of Christ and as a result you have become babes uh, because babes uh, uh, desire milk you have not yet developed molars and by cuspids because strong meat belongs to them that are of full age who have their senses exercised to desire both good and evil. Touch your neighbor and tell them, stick with the basics. I want to share with you, beloved, that uh, the basics can uh, lead you to greatness. I want you to know that you cannot obtain greatness in God until you develop the basic, simple act of obedience. Touch your neighbor and tell them you got to learn how to obey God. Uh, can I share with you that the uh, a simple act 
act of obedience will segue you into supernatural abundance. Yes, supernatural abundance cannot be accessed except by simple obedience. When ordinary people obey God, sometimes awkward instructions, we can expect experience the supernatural can I say it again when ordinary people just merely embrace sometimes the awkward instructions of God it leads to supernatural provision touch your neighbor and tell them again just obey God as the curtain rises on the scene of our text and our protagonist a prophet by the the name of Elijah steps on the stage of the scripture the Bible says we get to know him and we know his background according to James chapter number 5 Elijah is nothing special and nobody significant when we first meet him in James chapter 5 verses 17 and 18 the Bible informs us that Elijah was a man with a natural nature just like ours. Yes, he prayed. Here's the difference. He prayed fervently that it might not rain for three years and six months. The Bible says, and it did not rain on the earth. Then he turned around and prayed again. The Bible says that the heavens gave rain and the earth bore its fruit. He's an ordinary man. He's from the suburbs of the boondocks. He's nobody from nowhere but uh, this ordinary man is used by God to do extraordinary things. Uh, the Bible says he's an example to us uh, of possibilities as one's life is yielded to God. He becomes the premier prophet of the Old Testament. Yes, he even gets a chance to meet Jesus on the mountain called transfiguration because he simply did what God said. By the way, I suggest to you that our path to greatness will be paved by simple obedience. No, not with ingenious ideas. No, not with these plans that we've conjured through our intellect but tell somebody just do what he says you want to see results don't call a meeting don't brainstorm do what he says if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wickedness help me say then will I hear from heaven forgive their sins uh, and heal their land uh, touch your neighbor and tell him if you do what he says uh, he'll do what you say uh, did you hear what I'm telling you uh, if you respond to him the right way he'll respond to you the right way uh, I can hear my grandmother say he'll hear your humble cry uh, and he'll answer by and I come to tell you children some of you have strayed from your first love something or somebody got you discouraged you resigned you used to usher you used to sing in the choir yeah you used to serve but now something has turned you off but I come to reignite the fire of servitude you're not saved to go to heaven or otherwise God would have given you the Holy Ghost and freeze dried you till the rapture but you have been saved to serve 
You've been saved to get somebody saved. So let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. Can I preach a little while longer? Tell somebody and tell them, just do it. Just get up and do what God says. I hear the Holy Ghost saying, all you got to do, tell somebody, just show up. Uh, just stand up uh, just speak up uh, just so uh, just serve uh, just give uh, just worship uh, just forgive uh, I come to tell you God uh, will pour out a blessing upon you uh, that you won't have room enough to receive uh, I'm almost where I need to be uh, the text is showing us that God ensures his people are going to always be sustained in every circumstance by any means necessary. What are you saying, Rogers? You're going to survive no matter what it is takes God to keep you going come here church Elijah is from Tishbe again he's a country bumpkin there is no list of his pedigree or his lineage in the scripture yet God commands him to stand before King Ahab he's a wicked king with a wicked wife named Jezebel and the Bible says he now faces this king who rules 40 years after Solomon Solomon rules and Israel's at the height of its influence and affluence and prosperity 40 years later this wicked man steps in office with his crazy wife and brings God's people into idol worship let me tell you about idolatry idolatry is really the worship of self idolatry has to do with self aggrandizement self gratification at the expense and abuse of others but I come to tell you again the devil is a liar I come to tell the saints he has no power over the blood washed saint I know that you're standing in the prayer line waiting for prophet so and so to call you out of your name but I come to tell you here you don't need a prophet when you're looking at a prophet in the mirror child lay hands on yourself and say I must be somebody or I wouldn't be catching all of this the Bible doesn't speak about an apostle or a bishop it says he these signs shall follow them that believe in my name number one they shall cast out devils ask your neighbor when's the last time you cast out a devil yeah don't answer them don't you tell no lies in church you afraid of the devil you just like the children they used to sit downstairs when demonic spirits rose up in church tell somebody and tell them but not me I'm the devil's worst nightmare been through hell and back and I'm still here I come to tell somebody after you've received the Holy Ghost you should have power somebody's got to look him square in the face and tell the devil if you don't know about me you better ask somebody I am the righteousness of God a holy nation a peculiar people look at somebody and tell them neighbor drive the devil out of your life That idolatry has led to injustice. 
I got to finish now. Text your neighbor and tell them the text is powerful. Oh, the Bible says now, the Lord instructs him that is Elijah. He leads him to a wilderness and shares with him, you're going to be all right. I want you to go by the brook Cherith because that's going to be your source of water. As well, I have supernaturally commanded ravens to feed you. Text somebody and tell neighbor, believe God and watch him do it. Elijah gets to the brook Cherith and it looks just like what God said. He's now drinking water in the midst of a famine. Thank you, Jesus. But here he is. The mind-boggling thing to me. God now commands one of his creatures to open up a restaurant. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He commands the raven. Now, you got to understand this. Fowl, if you will. Someone of the bird family and ravens are not only scavengers but they are selfish and they don't like anybody else to, to eat anything but them and they are dirty birds they are nasty birds and God says the birds that usually eats up everything uh, is going to feed you. Uh, he says, I'm going to change uh, the molecular nature uh, of the bird. Uh, so what it would have normally done, uh, it won't have power to do. Uh, touch your neighbor to a neighbor. Uh, in this final season, uh, God's going to use uh, what would have been against you uh, to start working for you. Uh, God's going to put your enemies uh, in your employ, touch your neighbor and tell them, watch them feed you. Can I preach about seven more minutes? Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, that's why you can't resist who God puts in your way. I know you think they don't mean you no harm. I know you think that they're your worst enemy. But how many know God is sending you somewhere to somebody that's got something in their mouth for you? God Almighty, just come on, help me preach. Touch your neighbor to a neighbor. God is sending you somewhere to somebody that's got something in their mouth for you. They try to open their mouth and use profanity. And the next thing they know is they're saying, may God bless you. May the heaven smile upon you and give you peace. Touch your neighbor and tell them your meat is in the mouth of the raven. This is what I like, and that's why I read in the Christian Standard Bible. The Bible says, and the very ravens kept on bringing him meat and bread. Touch your neighbor and tell them, watch God use your enemies to keep on blessing you. I knew you were surprised the first time, but this is not a one shot deal. Touch your neighbor and tell them, everything is turning in your favor. You're going to be jacked up in your mind because every time you turn around, blessed on the right hand side, blessed on the left hand side, when I back up, I'm backing up into a blessing. When I proceed forward, I'm proceeding forward in a blessing. Touch your neighbor and tell them that's God for you. And the brook dried up. 
just when you were getting ready to depend on what God had done. Touch your neighbor and tell him God's up to something. God understood as long as Elijah was addicted to the now, he'd never get to his next. And I hear God saying, he's trying to get you to your next. So he's going to let your now dry up. God, I like this. In essence, this is what's going on. There's a woman that has what Elijah needs, and he has what the woman needs. I call it sovereign synchronicity. Touch your neighbor and tell a neighbor God has a plan. He knows how to partner people with different needs uh, into a symbiotic relationship uh, resulting in supernatural supply. Uh, look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, uh, watch how God hooks you up. Uh, uh, there are some of us uh, who decide to take relationship uh, into our own hands. Uh, but I come to tell you, you better wait on God for your hookup. Uh, because all that is in the world uh, is the lust of the eye, uh, the lust of the flesh, uh, and the pride of life. Uh, but you don't just want a pretty somebody uh, to hook up with. Because uh, how many know looks are going to fade? Uh, I wish I had somebody that's been married for over 20 years. Uh, uh, Thank you, Jesus. Stuff starts sagging and dragging. Y'all ain't hearing me. The six pack turns into a cave. Oh, hallelujah. Teeth have to be replaced with dental prosthetics. That's a fancy word of saying dentures. And you're going to have to learn how to make adjustments. Talk to me here. Touch your neighbor and tell neighbor. When God hooks you up, it's forever. When you do the hooking up, get ready for divorce court. But God said, give you somebody who is compatible. Oh, that's what the Bible says. Oh, come on in here. Don't you believe that lie? That opposites attract. He said to Adam, I will give you a help meet who is like you. I tell folks all the time, if you don't get me, then you don't get me. Talk to me here, somebody. Tell somebody I want somebody that gets me. Oh, and so here he is following God again. He says, Leave Cherith and go to Zarephath that belongeth to Sidon. I have commanded a woman that's a widow to feed you there. You got to see God's awkward and crazy ways. Zarephath is 100 miles geographically from the Brook Cherith. But when God says he's going to get you there, ain't no mountain too high. Ain't no valley too low. Ain't no river too deep. Touch somebody and some get ready to go where God's got for you. God, I got to finish here. The Bible says he gets there. Hallelujah. And he notices this woman don't look like she can supply anybody with anything. Tell somebody looks are deceiving. That's what I'm trying to tell God's people. Some of you think you're broke because you're judging your abundance by your bank account. 
account with children in your bank account does not testify of God's abundance in your life. I'm trying to tell you abundance is not having more than you need in one day. Abundance is having everything you need every day that you need it. Look at somebody and tell neighbor. All I have needed, his hand has provided. Yes, every day I wake up, I still got life. I ain't got a whole lot of money, but you can tell I ain't never missed a meal. I once was a young David said, and now I'm old, I'm not a See the righteous forsaken, let me get here and close this thing. Look at your neighbor, tell him again, neighbor. God will come through for you. Tell somebody, God will make a way. He approaches the woman that don't look like she got nothing. And says to her, lady, get me a cup of water. He's not espoused to her. What man can just push up on a woman that she's, he's never seen or she's never seen him and request anything of her? Tell somebody it had to be God. The Bible says the widow woman did what he said. She's on her way to get the cup of water. He said, hey, sis, hold up. Make me a little whole cake. She says, sir, now you're asking too much. She said, I just got a little flour and a little oil. I was going to fry this thing up for me and my son to have a little pancake and die. He said, hold up. I don't want all your flour. I just want you to make me a little loaf. My God, touch your neighbor to a neighbor. You'll be surprised at what God can do with little. My God, somebody that ain't got much ought to be shouting right now. God, uh, somebody that tried to cash up in the convocation uh, and your balance came up five dollars. Uh, oh God, I need you to start praising God because uh, you uh, have just met the requirements uh, for a miracle. Uh, you rich ballers uh, sit there and be dignified uh, but you people uh, who've been living from God's hand to your mouth uh, start praising him now. Uh, Cause you getting ready huh, to see the supernatural. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I stopped by to tell you. That's why you gotta learn how to bless folks, even when you don't think you got nothing. Touch your neighbor and tell neighbor, such as I have. I'm going to give it to you. Don't have silver or gold. In other words, God has blessed you so that the blessing flows through you and not just to you. I told the board of bishops, there's a problem and an issue when the thing doesn't flow through you and just to you. The Bible records two C's. One is the Red Sea and the other is the Dead Sea. Now, the genius of God is that both seas are fed by one tributary. That's the Jordan River. In the Red Sea, it's teeming with fish. Why? Because it's alive. The Dead Sea is salty because it has no outlet you hear what I say when stuff comes in and doesn't go out it makes you salty that's why folks are cantankerous mean and evil and honorary that's why they're salty cause a whole lot of stuff is coming in but ain't nothing coming out touch your neighbor tell them whatever I got you can have it uh, because the Lord 
is blessing me right now. I got to move on here, children. But I stopped to tell somebody, God will make a way. The Bible says she obeyed the man of God. And when she obeyed the man of God, the Bible says every time she went to the jar and to the jug there was something there now the old preacher that didn't have true biblical revelation would preach and tell you that the flower pot or the flower jug was overrunning with flour he tell you that the oil jug was overrunning with oil but that's not what the Bible says the Bible says when she went to the flower jar and scraped the bottom she went back and right on the bottom was still some more flour when she turned over the oil jug and emptied it and went back there was just enough oil to get the job done touch your neighbor to neighbor you're gonna make it on just enough that's why Jesus taught his disciples pray give us this day our daily bread touch your neighbor to neighbor we got just enough just enough for the city say yeah say yeah tell you God will make a way stringer it was three years in a drought you hear me but they all ate they all survived three years is 1,095 days 26,000 280 hours 1,576,800 minutes slap somebody a high five and say won't he do it yes yes I can hear the saints of old say he'll make a way out of no way won't he do it hear my grandmama say like a ship that's tossed and driven battered by an angry sea when the storms of life are threatening and the fury falls on me I wonder what I have done to make this race so hard to run but I said to my soul take courage the Lord will won't he do it? The Lord will make a way somehow, somehow. Say yeah, yeah, yeah. God will make a way. You think so, Apostle Rogers? No, I know so. Touch somebody and tell them, neighbor, I haven't read all the Bible, but I do know something. He fed 5,000 men with two sardines and a can of biscuits. Ah! He took water that was used for sanitation. They 
poured it out and it became wine. Tell somebody he brought the Hebrew boys out of the fiery furnace. He brought Daniel out of the den. Pack somebody and I found out he'll bring you out too. Has anybody ever had God to make a way for you? I took my father to his homeland on Sunday, about two and a half hours from Atlanta to this little hick town called Vidalia. And we took interstates. Ah, we're driving, and the interstate is wonderful. Oh, but then the interstate turned into a route. Now, you know you're in the South when it's not an interstate. It's a route. Tell somebody, neighbor, God's getting ready to route you to show you how he can make a way. <laughs> By the time we got to Vidalia, <gasps> there were little roads <gasps> half paved. <gasps> I said, is this where my daddy's from? <gasps> we pulled up to the Poplar Spring <gasps> Baptist Church. <gasps> got out of the car <gasps> and these bugs start swarming I said get me out of here I wasn't born here I was born in the city so nice they named it twice New York New York as we're driving away I didn't say anything to him I just let him talk and I said to myself how in the world the chief apostle Huey Rogers get a start in an obscure place how did he make it to where he got because he simply obeyed God when he was 14 years old he was immersed in water in the name of Jesus huh? on Christmas Sunday huh? my God a few months later huh? on Resurrection Sunday huh? my God he received the baptism huh? of the Holy Ghost huh? in that same year huh? he acknowledged his call the ministry huh? the man's been preaching and now huh? almost huh? my God close to 80 years huh? and somebody wants to know dad how did you make it but can I give them a biopic of your journey Huey Rogers would tell you this is my story this is my song touch your neighbor to neighbor can I tell you how I made it yeah Praise my way through. Yes. They laughed at him while other preachers were trying to be dignified, sitting with their legs crossed. Huey Rogers had enough gumption to preach what God told him, the way God told him. Other preachers were trying to impress Bishop R.C. Lawson, but this man of God was a praiser. Bishop Lawson looked at him, said, son, you got clapping in your hand. You got dancing in your feet. I want you to run a week's revival at the Refuge Temple. And at 16 years old, he ran his first revival at the Greater Refuge Temple. I'm trying to tell you, God will make a way. A man's gift will make a road for you worry about who don't know your name, but rejoice.
Jesus that your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Somebody shout and give them glory. I'm done. I refuse to let the devil sit on all our laps tonight and make us believe that God's not going to make a way. Come on, let's be truthful. How many like your presider have left some stuff at home? I'm going I'm to try that one. How many of you left some stuff at home? Because I refuse to bring it to convocation. But I want to decree and declare by the time you get home there'll be a blessing waiting at the gate. Come on, help me, Smith. Touch your name and tell him it's at the door. Say yes. I feel a praise down in my belly. Working his way to my feet. Touch your name and tell him, neighbor. Put a smile on your face because God is going to make a way for you and yours. Hey, tell me you got a light bill due and a gas bill too. Telephone disconnect waiting on your next paycheck. Touch your neighbor to name. Tell you what you ought to do. Tell him praise him in advance. Cause he's ready to make a way for you. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of me. Let me sit down. Touch your neighbor to neighbor. Give me some room, cause God is making a way for me. Don't wait for the meat. Go ahead and praise him now. Go ahead and bless him now. Y'all thought I was playing. We'll be out of here by 9.30. Because the way has already been made. Yes! Yes! I know it's all right. God bless your Bible, way. Somebody, God will make a way. Come on, grab somebody by the hand and say, God will make a way. God will make a way. Oh, yeah. And wow, let me share this with you. Hallelujah. And wow, the presider was delivering the kingdom kilo to dress. He kept saying, God will make a way. God will make a way. God will make a way. And I kept hearing, out of no way. Out of your little. Out of no way. Out of your lack. Out of your way. Out of your insufficiency. Out of no way. You are the way God will make a way. Out of no way. But you got to come this far. How? How? Do you believe it? Tell yourself, I am the way that God's going to make out of nowhere. Come on, give God a hand praise for the keynote. Our presiding bishop, 
light in the evening time. Kingdom keynote address. We made history tonight, and we found out that God will make a way out of no way. I am the way. One point before we bring forth apostle. As he was sharing with us about the two seas and Jordan River, I do know that Jordan means the river of doubt. Huh? It means a river of doubt. He said one flows through and the other stops. Never let doubt stop what God's going to feed you, what God's going to give you. You got a hand praise for the address. We made history tonight. Kingdom Kido, evening light address. Apostle Bennett is coming at this time for our keynote. Keynote off a Torre. Did not the word of God burn in our hearts today? Did we not hear from God? Did not the servant of God speak as the oracles of God? Do me a favor. Why don't you lift your hands to glory? And tell God, thank you. Come on, you can do better than that. Tell him, thank you for making a way out of no way. Thank you for that message, Apostle, our presiding bishop. Thank you. In Jesus' name, this is the high hour. This, this, this is the word that you need to take to your house. This is the word you need to take home. This is what we gathered here to actually hear. This is the consecrated hour, amen, that we look to hear as a corporate body. And the word is that he will, God will, he will make a way. Let's thank God for our CFL and the person of uh, Chief Apostle Huey L. Rogers for life, our apostolic father. Come on, you can do better than that. You can do better. That's good. Brothers and sisters, we've reached a point in service where we communicate with our presiding bishop. Our presiding bishop has proven throughout his tenure to be reputable or reputable. And we have witnessed the fact that he has proved and he has tremendously led us for the last four years. And we're looking forward to his superintendency in his next tenure. Brothers and sisters, it is now time to communicate. And by communicate, I'm not talking about speaking oratorical promulgations. But the Greek word is koinoio, which means to share. Or it literally means I share. I share, and it means to contribute. So as we prepare our hearts to share tonight, we actually, are, we, when we contribute, we are sharing in the ministry of our presiding bishop. This is exactly what we're doing when we communicate. So I'm going to call at this time uh, our uh, presidium, executive board of bishops, and our general board of bishops. Praise the Lord. If you would all stand, and uh, if we can have, yeah, we can have something. Thank you. So, glory to God. We have collected today, collectively. $8,300, $8,300 collectively we are sharing and people are giving they're giving from their heart and and we we, we thank you amen uh, the executive board and the general board and presidium so we will follow our presidium as they you can set that right in front of you right, right in front of you 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 thank you and we'll follow as our presidium our presidium will lead the way in Jesus name yes just follow the presidium wow wow
I want you, I want you to sow right now because God is going to bless you right at this moment. I'm telling you, I'm excited. Listen, Bishop, I'm excited as well. I think my mic wasn't on in the first part of it. But so I just want to make sure that we hear heard who we have here. We have General Board Bishop, Bishop Carl Jones. And listen, Bishop, uh, today has been about celebrating our presiding bishop and his 70th birthday. And not only that, but he's getting ready to be installed again for another term, another term. as our presiding bishop. And we're so honored to have him as our presiding bishop. And right now, our uh, Apostle Bennett is giving a... Uh, the appeal for us in the house. But you know what? We want to do something just for you, our online community, because you guys are in Holy Convocation as well. So Bishop, uh, give them something that they can uh, give to the uh, give to Apostle at this moment, because that's what we're doing. We're blessing our presiding bishop right now. I want everybody at this moment and time, I want you to get a seed. I want you to sow a seed. The ways to give are on the screen at the moment. And I want you to use those means and I want you to give a seed today. I want everybody that is listening to get a seed of $100, $100, yes. It might seem like a stretch to some, it might seem far-fetched to some, but I'm telling you, if you put a seed in the ground, God will bless and honor that seed. I want you to give it right now. Go to the Cash App. Go to the means that you see on the screen, and I want you to give at this moment and watch God move for you. Watch God work in your situation, and I promise you that God will answer every prayer that you now petition and give in Jesus' name. And, and it's not on the screen. I'm just going to say it. The ways to give is at Cash App. It's uh, dollar sign, Bible Way, 1957, PayPal, B-W-W-I-N-C, or you can go out to our website at BibleWayChurch.org or Givelify Bible Way Church Worldwide Inc. That should be on the screen, but if it's not, I just wanted to say it as well. Because you know what? I know what the bishop, what presiding bishop means to me. Bishop, what does he mean to you? And what's the impact that he's had on your life, sir? He, he is a spiritual father to me. He has opened so many doors for me. And I tell you, I am just excited and I am glad to be a part of Bible Way. I'm excited to be a spiritual. Bishop, I'm, I'm, I listen, I'm glad to be here and I'm excited. I'm telling you night after night, but this night, God really spoke to us and did, didn't our hearts burn oh, yes. oh yes. And it didn't take a long time. It didn't take a long sure time. We, listen, we're at the conclusion, but I'm telling you, you can still get your seat in the ground yeah. right now and watch what God does for you. Elder, what did you think of the service tonight? I enjoyed, it was everything and more than what I've expected. I truly know, if I didn't know already, I know now that if, as long as I have the faith, God will make a way. And I just believe that, and I can't wait to take that home and take it with my life and then the various things that I go through, knowing that no matter what happens in my life, I know that God will make a way. You know the great thing about uh, the hybrid church, and we've been talking about this before, mm -hmm. is that before, when we, when we were younger, once it was over, it was over. It was over. Yeah. Unless you had a CD yeah. or a yeah. DVD. Right, right. Mm -hmm. You know, right, or you're right. sitting there taking notes, but now you can go back and watch it again right. mm -hmm. over and over and over That's again. Right. Because this word was not only just a word, but it was a vision for the church. Yes. Right. That's what Kingdom Keynote is about. Yes. It's it's the address to the church to let us know how we are moving for the year going forward. Correct. And in this word, we heard that God will make a way. Mm -hmm. I think that's an amazing thing. It is. Life changing. So, you know, I think in this moment, we have to take advantage of what our presiding bishop is showing us and, and teaching us that God will make a way. Bishop, expand on God making a way for us just for a minute, sir. Yes, absolutely. God will make a way in your finances. God will make a way in your body. You might be sick right now, but God will make a way in a supernatural way. I'm telling you, just point your hand to the screen. I believe that God is healing you right now. God is delivering you right now. Wherever you are, just know that God will make a way for you right now. It's done in Jesus' name. Now listen, we have another two days. Listen, I feel like I've been here about two weeks already. The spirit has been heavy. It, you know, it's not, I feel drained, but at the same time, I feel energized and motivated to keep learning. 
And listen, I don't know, I don't want to put this on you or act like I know what's going to happen, but I hope you're going to be a part of 7 a.m. prayer. Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. Listen, last year we were here in Atlanta, and it was like a revival. Yes, right. it's your right. 7 a.m. So, you know, it's so many things that we can look forward to. Uh, the, all the, the out sessions with the men, the brotherhood, the missionaries that have been going forth, the presiders prayer, there's so many things. And then tomorrow, we have Apostle Bennett at the Hour of Power. Oh, yeah. So I know that's going to be amazing. Powerful. I know the Saints from North Carolina are coming. Some of them are already here, so that's going to be amazing. And Thursday night, we have our holy ordination service with none other than our third uh, assistant presiding bishop, Apostle Philip A. Parrott, who will be preaching. It is going to be an impactful and powerful word. But we're going to go back. But before we go back into the service, Bishop, say a word of prayer Amen. to the people that they might get healing and blessings in Jesus' Amen. name. Stretch your hands, kind Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we pray right now for every person that is watching. God, I pray for supernatural healing right now that, God, you do what you've done in times past, God. From the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, we count it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, we're going to go back into the service. Bishop, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Listen, you. I just pulled you from your seat. Yes. You didn't even know, but thank God for you just being uh, willing to help us with, with, with our endeavor. So we thank you so much. You. Listen, we're going back into the service now. Listen, God bless you, and we'll see you in the morning at 12 noon. We thank God for the faithfulness of God and the faithfulness of the saints. Amen. We're looking so forward to the blessings of the Lord on tomorrow. I want you to meet us at early morning prayer. Some of you haven't had the opportunity to encounter God in the early morning sharing. But tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., we're looking for God's people. And then I want you to come at 10 a.m. Now, these candidates who will be offered up to God and consecrated as bishops in the Lord Church, both of them will be bringing a word from the, God, from the Lord. They will not be competing. They will be complimenting each other. And then at 12 noon, help me say 12 noon, uh, the 10 o'clock service is sponsored by our brotherhood. The 12 noon service is being partnered between the International Church and a United Deacons Association. And his grace, the Honorable Apostle John Bennett, the preaching machine from Durham, North Carolina, will bring the word at 12 oh noon. You want to be here early and get a seat. Family members and loved ones are coming from all over the country to see their loved ones ordained and consecrated is the high holy service of convocation. My God, that man raised up and preserved for such a time as this. A.K.A. the praying apostle, A. Philip Parrott, will be preaching tomorrow night. I'm envious of all the candidates. I wish he preached when I was ordained. It's going to be bedlam in here tomorrow night. Listen, beloved, patronize all of our vendors. My good friend, Dr. Amen. Robbie Warren is in the building. He's got a tremendous book that he wrote. Um, I'll let you see this. I'll let you see the title of the book, and you decide for yourself uh, uh, <laughs> what the book poses. Oh, thank God! Within the cadre of bishops, we have culinary genius. He's known as the baking bishop. On his menu tonight is salmon. Mm, what kind of wings do you have? Buffalo wings and mambo sauce wings and, and chipotle wings. And the cake for tonight is banana pudding cake. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Shall we all stand? We're going to give it back into the hands of those. Would you be so kind as to let the Board of Bishop exit? I'm going to ask at this time uh, that the district elder, foreign delegate, district 
Elder Robinson would come. And after the board has recessed out, would you give us God's benediction? Let's all say amen. unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless for the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and evermore amen God bless you